the Biden administration has faced overwhelming backlash for the horrific images of officers on horseback intimidating and threatening Haitian migrants. Yielding to pressure, the Biden administration has temporarily suspended the use of horse patrols at the border in Del Rio, Texas. News of the suspensions come as the U.S. Special Envoy to Haiti, Daniel Foote, announced his resignation. According to Foote, the inhumane treatment of Haitian migrants at the border prompted his departure. Foote's resignation letter, submitted to Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, read in part, I will not be associated with the United States' inhumane, counterproductive decision to deport thousands of Haitian refugees and illegal immigrants to Haiti, a country where American officials are confined to secure compounds because of the danger posed by armed gangs in control of daily life. According to the Department of Homeland Security, approximately 4,000 migrants remain at the makeshift encampment at Del Rio border. That number is down substantially from the 15,000 migrants who occupied the border a week ago. U.S. and Mexican officials have moved more than 3,000 migrants to various processing centers along the border to expedite processing, while over 1,400 migrants have been returned to Haiti. But Homeland Security has declined to confirm the number of Haitians released into the U.S. Joining us to discuss the latest developments in the Haitian migrant story is the author of America Should Be Grateful to Haiti, Don't Believe the Lie When You See. Roger Prasad. First of all, Mr. Prasad, what do you make of Mr. Foote's resignation and the, this kind of very scathing letter that he sent to Secretary Blinken? Well, there's a lot behind that, because Mr. Foote was passing on information to the administration about things that were going wrong inside Haiti. He knows what is going on, the corruption, the gangs, the drugs. He knows what's going on. But they were not listening to him. And this incident on the border, this is the last straw. And we need to understand that this man is lashing out because of the injustice that he's seen that is being done in Haiti and now at the American border. Mr. Uh, Jimmy Jean-Louis, uh, Haitian actor, I want to bring you into this conversation. I want to get your reaction to the resignation of the U.N. the the U.S. Special Envoy to, Envoy to Haiti, and what do you think about that? Well, I think this is a, a great, great move from someone who understands the situation, especially a high-ranked uh, American in. Haiti being able to send out that kind of message. Hopefully, more people will be as brave as he is, because the situation in Haiti is just not good at all. Uh, so, Roger, I want to go back to you about, you know, they now say that 1,400 Haitians have been deported to Haiti. It is not clear to me what, what percentage of those people actually were processed, given some sort of hearing before they were sent back to Haiti, or if they were, the, they were using the Trump-era rule about the, the COVID-19 virus that allowed people to be exported without a hearing? Do, do, is it clear to you whether or not these 1,400 people actually received an asylum hearing before they were deported? As far as I know, they did not. These were single males, for the most part. These were single males or single females that were deported. People that have COVID were not deported. They're being treated. Now, this is inhumane, and they're not, they're not giving any due process at all. They're just being deported because they, have, they claim they have no connection to this country. But, you know, Jimmy, the, the whole idea of uh, asylum seeking has nothing to do with whether or not you have a, 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 a connection to the country, right? The, the, the idea of seeking asylum in another country uh, is because you fear what's happening, where you're coming from, and it is perfectly legal to do. The, you know, uh, seeking asylum in Compl America and showing up is perfectly legal. It is not against the law. Once you turn Com yourself over and say, I am seeking asylum, I'm not trying to scurry into your country, I'm not trying to hide, I'm seeking asylum, please hear my case, 
That is a perfectly legal thing to do. Why are we in this position of treating these people for showing up as if they are somehow criminal or invading when they are seeking asylum? Well, uh, listen, let, let's not uh, go around the bush here. I think we're dealing with black people. And, and uh, we are in a world, in a society where some black people are still being treated poorly. Uh, this situation is not new, okay? Uh, Visions have been, have been uh, living Haiti for many, many years, for the past seven, eight years from this turnaround. We're not gonna speak about what happened 40 years ago with the boat people, which was exactly the same thing. If the, if, if the situation is not good in your country, you just go and see what's going on elsewhere. And Haiti has not been good for the past few years, so this, these people are just looking for a better place to be. And they've been working hard, really hard, to get to America, going to Chile, Brazil, crossing 10 countries, all the way up to Mexico, and now they're finally in America? You're gonna send them back to Haiti? A place they've been, they've been trying to... It, it's just, it just doesn't make any sense, you know, the way I look at things. So, Roger, one thing that the, the special envoy highlighted in his letter was that Haiti is too dangerous right now, even for the Americans working in the country to not be in a secure compound. How could you justify sending people back to that country, some of whom have not lived there for years? You were, as Jimmy was so, just pointing out, some of them have left after the first her, uh, uh, earthquake in 2010, have not been back since. How do you justify sending people back into that? Maybe they don't even have a home there anymore. Maybe some of them, we were understanding, they don't even speak the language anymore. How do you justify sending them back if the Americans there have to be in secure compounds? There's absolutely no justification. But what's worse is we owe Haiti a debt that we can't repay. You got to remember, if it wasn't for the Haitian Revolution, there would be no America like it is today. The Haitian Revolution created the need for the Louisiana Purchase, which caused America to double in size. Eight, seven states, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa, and South Dakota, and six more states, 828,000 square miles. This was a gift from the Haitian people. The two people that benefited most from the Haitian Revolution were the Americans and the British, because the French were well on their way to becoming the most powerful nation in the world until they were stopped by Toussaint Louverture and his black army. <laughs> well, I had the so, pleasure so, to portrait so, Toussaint Louverture. In, you know, I was saying, since he's mentioning Toussaint Louverture, I had a pleasure to portray Toussaint Louverture in a biopic, uh, which brought me back to 18. 1802, three up to the Haitian uh, liberation, 1804. So it's unbelievable to actually be in the skin of such a leader in a movie and then having to face the reality that Haiti is facing right now. As a Haitian citizen, it hurts me so much. And it doesn't make any sense, you know, that the first Black Republic that fight and win their own independence are in this kind of situation. 200 years later. So I'm not saying that, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a theorist, but I think there is some kind of conspiracy against that, 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 that superpower that Haiti used to be, the fact that they, they, they were able to defeat the so-called great Napoleon, and they, they really never, ever got credits for that, you know? And they were able to change the entire world, you know, because the economy of the world changed drastically the minute that Haiti got the power. You know, so I think there is something very loud to say about that, and people are just afraid to tackle it. And uh, we, we're going to have to revisit the relationship between America and Haiti for the past 200 years because it's not been good. It's just been one-sided. Only one group of people have been benefiting from that kind of relationship. What's happening to the Haitians? So I want to see some, some benefits going towards the Haitians as well. Let, let me just add this real right, quick. We, we, Thomas have Jefferson. Than, we have less than a minute. Go ahead. Thomas Jefferson was in support of the Haitian Revolution. He wrote a letter to his daughter proclaiming how great it was and hoping that it would spread to the rest of the West Indies. But by 1804, what was a glory to most of the world became trepidation for countries that were slaveholders. 
because they viewed Haiti as a disturbance. This was the first successful slave revolution since the Trachian gladiator Spartacus. And this was done by Toussaint Louverture. They not only beat the French, they beat the local French, they beat the British. 55,000 British troops in five years, over 10 million pounds. Then they beat the Spanish. Then they beat Napoleon's second group that came in. 408 ships, 88,000 troops. Roger Persaud and Jimmy Jean-Louis, thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. We're going to stay on top of that story.